Welcome back. The panel is with us from their remote locations. NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Casey Hunt, former Congressional Budget Director and current President of the American Action Forum Douglas Holtz Eakin, and infectious disease physician Dr. Nahib Badalia from Boston University. Doug, I want to start with you because we've done a lot on the vaccine. We've done a lot on the reopening, on the health aspect of things. But let's talk about the economy. Just give us your big picture sense. Um, You hear about 2008. You hear about the Great Depression. How would you describe where we're at right now and where you think we're realistically headed? Well, Chuck, we've had some horrific uh, economic data. We saw the largest one-month decline in consumer confidence, the largest one-month decline in consumer spending. Uh, We've had 30 million people uh, apply for unemployment insurance in the past six weeks. Um, I think it's fair to expect that over the months of April, May, and June, we'll see national income decline by 10%. The worst year in the Great Depression was 12%. We're going to experience that this spring. Do you think, Doug, I want to stick with you a minute, do you think that the ideas that have been percolating in Congress left and right in general have been meeting the moment, or do you feel as if in some ways members of Congress haven't fully grasped how big and how gargantuan this is? I think Congress deserves credit for moving quickly, uh, moving dramatically. Uh, If you think about what's going on, we're losing 10 percent of national income. Uh, the so-called CARES Act borrowed 10 percent of national income and is trying to distribute it uh, to, to Americans in the form mm-hmm. of unemployment insurance, loans to businesses, grants to businesses, checks. Uh, that's, yeah. however, just a Band-Aid. The real work has to be to get the economy to stop falling. We cannot do that continuously. So we're going to have to get the economy um, yeah. moving again. And there you're at this tough intersection of the public health mission, which has got to be the primary objective, right. is also the most important economic policy. Right. And Dr. Bedelia, I think this is the, the challenge that I feel like you and the public health community and, 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 and health officials in general, there is life and livelihood and that balance. And, and what do you fear from that the pressure public health officials are going to be feeling about reopening the economy? What do you fear that's going to lead to? Well, Chuck, you heard uh, Tom Anglesby talk about the fact that the conditions haven't changed from when we put the lockdown into place, which means reopening is this balance of, you know, restarting economy against acceptance of the risk that we will get more infections. And a portion of those infections will result in hospitalizations and deaths. When you look at the preparedness of the states, it's kind of a patchwork, right? So the capacity, the core capacity is in certain terms of testing. Um, Dr. Engels, we mentioned the fact about this idea of how many people you test. And WHO says that if you are testing to a point where more than 10% of the people you're testing are still coming back positive, you're not testing enough. But of the 33 states, 12 of them have rates above 10%. When you look at ICU capacity of those 33 states, eight of them have already hit their headroom for ICU capacity. And when you talk about contact tracing, there's a Hopkins study that says that we need 100,000 contact tracers. And when NPR did a study of all the states, um, 41 states responded and said, we have about 7.6 thousand contact tracers and we're looking to hire 36,000 more. So we're not there in terms of capacity or it's a patchwork where some states are potentially doing it better than other. And so my fear, as it is with a lot of public health folks, is is ensuring that states meet those capacities before they take the risk of putting particularly the vulnerable amongst our communities at at risk. So it's nursing homes, prisons, minority communities. Let me ask you the question this way. Over the last two months in the medical community, what have, have we learned enough? And with the news on Remdesivir, how much now, how much, how much capacity has that bought us? How much of, of an ability that we know there is some best practices that can lessen the, the time in the hospital or lessen um, the mortality rate? How comfortable are you getting that we're there where that can allow us to have some more reopenings? We're definitely in a better place than we were, you know, in some ways. So one part is our testing capacity is better. If you looked at the numbers about a month ago, we were testing 10 people, you know, eight people to 10 people per per 1,000, and we're now testing about 18 to 19, Mm -hmm. so that's better. Remdesivir is 
promising and the fact that it provides you with the proof of concept, as Dr. Fauci has said, that the drugs like it or in itself could help reduce mortality. But we still need a whole other range of drugs, such as we need medications that if you're exposed, potentially it keeps you from getting sick. So something called post-exposure prophylaxis. Yeah. And then from what we know about this disease, you know, we're learning that it's basically making the body attack, uses, uses the body's immune system to basically attack itself. The virus wreaks havoc. And then the rest of the stuff that happens to the body is the attack that you're doing right. on itself. And a lot of drugs that are still in the works haven't shown, um, are starting to show some promise, but we don't have a slam dunk in, in helping with mm -hmm. that aspect of disease yet. Let me move to the politics here. Casey Hunt, we are going to get a, a sort of right in front of a, a, the, the split screen. The Senate is coming back. The House isn't. Um, the Senate is, is saying, well, look, we've got to tough it out, essentially. The House is saying it's not safe. It's the divide we're seeing in America in some ways between left and right. And Chuck, you're even seeing it in who is deciding to wear masks uh, when they come up to Capitol Hill and who isn't. And, you know, this is emerging as the kind of partisan divide that I think, uh, you know, if you listen to the experts like, like those that we've just been talking to, you know, if Americans are not all on the same page about engaging in the public health protection measures, it gets a lot harder to get to the point where you can feel confident uh, in reopening, that everybody will remain healthy. And the longer that this goes on and the sharper those divisions become, the harder the overall mission is. And, you know, don't forget every month that goes by, we're a month closer to a presidential election, and that's going to influence so much of this conversation as well. I'm curious, Casey, I, I was the whole testing weirdness of the Senate. The president said, oh, use this quick testing feature that we've been using at the White House. And then McConnell and Pelosi decided not to accept it. What is going on there? They don't think that they should be seen having access to things that regular everyday Americans don't have access to. And in, in that way, the imperative is a little different. My question is, if they do bring the House back, it's different from the Senate in that it's 435 people. They are scattered across all right. corners of this country, all coming back. The risk is very high. Will those rank and file members say this is something that we need in order to be able to function? Pelosi and McConnell are relatively old school in their thinking about things like this. I mean, there was a lot of reluctance in the beginning to even sure. close tours at the Capitol. And Nancy Pelosi was saying, you know, we are the captains of the ship. We are the last to leave. At the end of the day, concerns among her members pushed her to change course on that. All right. Douglas holtz Eakin with uh, The Economy, Nahid Badalia on health, and Casey Hunt there in politics. Thank you all, Casey. You're going to stick around for a little more political talk. Hello from Washington. I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.